A site map is a UX design artifact that gives you a bird's eye view of the structure of a website or application. It depicts the primary navigation of an app, which is basically the items that you see on a navigation menu or navbar. And it lists the information that falls under these categories. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a site map step by step from scratch. To make it easier to understand, we'll use an example of an e-learning platform that offers various courses across different categories, similar to Udemy. Let's go. So before you start, there are a few prerequisites that you need in order to design a correct sitemap. You first should have a good understanding about the client's business, the users, your competition, and the existing product if the client has one. This is usually done in the research phase of the UX design process. So it involves asking users questions, asking clients questions, doing a little secondary research about your competition, and basically analyzing your findings to see what the current status quo is of the application. Next, you need a list of all the information and features that need to go in this app. So if you're designing a new app from scratch, you need to talk to the product team or some other stakeholders that might have listed all these requirements in a document. One thing to keep in mind is that these requirements, they don't have to be super refined. They can be raw solutions or just ideas of the things that you want to include in this app. Usually all of these requirements are prepared by a product manager or another C-level stakeholder and they are written in a document called a product requirements document or a PRD. So in our e-learning platform example, the features and information could include a list of all the courses, a course page where you can see all the details about the course, reviews about each course. You can have a feature for uh, allowing the user to save certain courses so that they can watch it offline. You can also have a different section where a user can highlight certain videos inside a course if, if it's a video course. You could also have a section called watch list or wish list, which is a section where users can save certain courses that they want to watch next or they want to buy in the future. Basically, the whole point is to write out all the different features or solutions or basically all the information that is going to go in this app. Okay, so once you have all your requirements, you can now list all of them down on a pieces of paper so that you have it in front of you. You can either use sticky notes, which is my personal preference as there's something special about writing things down physically versus typing it out in FigJam or Miro or any other visual tool that's available online. So basically all you need to do is take a sticky note and take a marker of whatever color you desire and write down one solution per sticky note. And you can do this for all the different solutions that you have or different sub features that you have. And just write one on each sticky note and then paste it on a wall. So I'm gonna do this for our e-learning example. So as you can see, I've listed out a bunch of solutions and features on sticky notes and I've pasted them here. To give you an idea of what a solution is or what it can be, it can be something like Watch list feature, so I've just written watch list feature over here. Or you could go even more detailed and have something like allow a user to share a course or allow a user to favorite a course or like a course. And you could also have a solution which says most popular courses by category. You want to show the user the most popular courses, let's say in the software development category, right? or a public speaking category, of course, all the courses on public speaking. Uh, also, organize course by category. This is a, an important one where, let's say there are thousands of courses across different categories, such as, you know, design, coding, uh, gra graphic design, photography, video editing, and so on. So it's important to have them organized by category so that a user can find them quickly. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what a solution is and what a feature is and uh, what goes on these sticky notes. There's no right or wrong here, but the idea is to get all of the things that are gonna be part of an application on a sticky note so that it'll help you organize them in the next steps and build out your site map. Okay, so in the next step, what you need to do is look at the solutions that you've mapped out here and start grouping them into groups that you think make sense and more importantly, what your users might think makes sense. So for instance, let's take an example where I pick this solution which says, allow a user to share a course. Now I will paste it on the side here and I will try to find another solution that is related to this solution over here, which is sharing a course. So allow ability for a user to review a course, then ability for a user to like a course or favorite a course. And let's find one more. Allow a user to leave a rating on a course. 
So essentially, all of these four solutions, all of these four actions over here are related to a user doing something for a course. So these are course actions that a user can take that would be available to them when they're viewing a course page. So for instance, if you go on a course, these are four different actions that you can perform. So similarly, you want to do that for all these different solutions here and form them into groups. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that if a particular solution belongs to two different groups, all you need to do is take another sticky note and write the same solution down and paste it in both those two groups. So essentially, a solution can be part of two different groups. Okay, so once you've grouped all the solutions into different groups, it's now time to label them. So labeling makes other stakeholders and other designers understand what these different groups mean. And also, hopefully, these labels will be the actual keyword terms that you will use on your navigation. So for instance, this group over here involves solutions that are related to a user's profile. So for example, save course to watch offline, allow a user to set reminders, a watch list feature, section where users can view all of their courses that they have taken or they are currently taking. So basically all of these solutions are for a particular user and that is personalized to them. So what we can do is we can take another sticky note, preferably of a different color and we would write the name of this group. So I have called it user profile and you paste it here. And you do this for these other groups as well. So this I know is gonna be called home or home page or landing page or dashboard. This is gonna be called course page. So when you click into a course, you'll see all of, uh, all of these solutions pertain to it. And this could be miscellaneous. So you could figure out where you wanna add these solutions later. But for the most part, user profile, home page, and course page will form our primary navigation because these are the main buckets of all the information that we want to show in our app. One thing to keep in mind is that clients may sometimes give you full-fledged features that they want included in their app. So for instance, they may already tell you that we want to have a feature called user profile and we want all of these solutions in it. So while you're writing down all your solutions, and while you're mapping them out before you start grouping them, you should already have a group called user profile and add some solutions to it or organize some other solutions that fit within this profile. So once you have labeled all of your groups, it's time to prioritize them. And essentially, if you have looked at any nav bar or any navigation menu, you would see certain items on the left and certain items on the right. That's intentionally done because you're, it's depicting the priority or the importance of certain features. So the most important features would be on the left and the little less or secondary menu items would be on the right. So in our example, I would say the categories group is important and the dashboard and home page is important because you want the user to discover the different courses that we have to offer. And things like uh, the course page can be secondary because after a user discovers a course is when they go to a course page. And similar to user profile, this comes in after a user has selected a course and uh, saved it or they have started watching it and so on. So essentially, you want to prioritize your features. So you can either make a note over here or you could write it down in your notebook. One more point to keep in mind is not just prioritizing the groups, but within the groups, you want to prioritize the solutions. So for instance, in the dashboard screen, we have allow a user to resume a course they're currently taking, that is continue watching, versus show courses that are newly launched and show most popular courses. So amongst these, which are most important? According to me, I would say showing, allowing a user to resume a course that they're currently taking is would be of most importance because a user has already committed to a course, they've started watching it. So when they come to their dashboard or their homepage, this should be the first thing that they see that this is the course they're currently taking, you should continue uh, watching it. And then we can show them the most popular courses or any new courses that are launched. So the point is within each group, we want to organize the features by importance. Finally, once you have prioritized all your features and you have a clear idea of which ones are super important versus which ones are secondary, tertiary, and so on, you can then go into your software and you can actually draw out the digital sitemap and map out all of these features to form the structure of your application. So essentially, the first tree item would be the name of your app and then it would be followed by the list of all the primary navigation items. So in our example, it's the dashboard on the left 
left followed by categories and then on the right we will have user profile and within dashboard and within categories a user can select a course and that would take them to a course page within a course page we would have different information like the course metadata the list of all the homework that people have done and the feedback that they have given essentially this is all the information pertaining to a course that would fall under the course page tab by looking at the site map you now have a bird's eye view of all the different information and features that are part of an application and you can see how things fit within the structure of an app What's super beneficial about having a sitemap is that when you want to add a new feature, you now know exactly where to add it or how you want to structure it if your foundation is strong. Sitemaps are crucial for any UX designer and it's a crucial part of the UX design process. However, site mapping is only a part of this process. There are other activities such as user flow mapping, wireframes, component design and so on. I have created a framework that covers all of these steps and that will help you as a UX designer take a project from start to finish. What's super interesting is that I've not only explained the theory but I've used a real world practical example to explain all of these concepts so that you can understand how to apply it in your work. I've also included a design along exercise which is a hands-on exercise where you'll apply all of the learnings that you learned from the framework and you can compare it with my solutions as well. I hope this video was useful and if you want to see more tutorials on UX design then do consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.